All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I just wanted to say um, a huge thank you to Kate Nelligan, who is an equine partnered coach. And she is going to join us today to talk about boundaries. Um, so Kate, if you could just introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about what you do. Sure. Thanks for having me. I uh, partner horses and humans together on the ground for personal and professional transformation. We do experiential education and learning and coaching with horses um, around essentially growing our strengths. So our strengths in emotional intelligence, in leadership, in team dynamics and communication. Uh, and we can really learn like these soft skills, these emotional intelligence skills by learning from horses because they have this incredible evolved way of being where they really embody and then help us to embody and understand concepts around trust and clear communication and boundaries and things like that. Excellent. And Kate joins us on a lot of our different programs with Catalyst. So not only our symposium, our Veterinary Teams Living Well Symposium, but also joins us in our women's retreat and is just a great partner to have as we tackle things, um, all of the things that she just mentioned that she works with in partnering us with horses and does some amazing work. So today we're gonna to tackle the subject of boundaries. So I have a couple of questions to help us um, kind of learn from Kate and how she has tackled boundaries and how she works with people on boundaries. So um, if you could tell us the biggest benefit you have gained from having healthy, healthy boundaries in place. Yes, so the horses have taught me so much around boundaries and I honestly owe a lot of my healthier boundaries. I'm still a work in progress as we all are um, to really working with them and, and learning from them because they have such clear communication because that is actually how they survive being prey animals. Um, they are very clear in their kind of hierarchy in their herd who eats first and uh, basically how their whole system works together for the benefit of the greater good. And so I think for me, my personal experience with boundaries has been, um, you know, sometimes swinging from the pendulum of like, no big strong nose and and uh, to like, sure, I'll do anything and, and really trying to find that happy medium place. But the biggest benefit is really having more of my own personal energy and personal power. So that way um, I am checking in with myself and knowing what's true for me, what's a yes for me, what's a no. Um, and so because of that, I have more of my own energy. My energy management is better. Um, I have better self-care and I am making more conscious choices. And so with that, I have more of me available to me and to others. Um, and the power is really in the present moment. And that's where we make choices around boundaries is in the present moment. And that's what we get from really being with these guys because they live in the present moment all the time. And for us to come in and work with them, we also have to be in the present moment to stay safe because they're 1,200 pounds and they're powerful. And so we have to really practice presence and to really know who I am, what my own um, yes and no is, what my own voice is. Um, so I have a lot more energy. It's so much that we learn from the horses. And until I participated in a session, I really had no idea how much they could really bring to this type of exploration of ourselves. So I love what you do and um, just how much it really brings to our well-being. So, um, so now can you share with us the biggest challenge you face um, with setting healthy boundaries? Yeah, I feel like, as I mentioned, being a work in progress, you know, there, I think boundaries can, especially for women, because it seems to be something that we were not really ever taught and we never maybe had great role modelship for it. Whereas I think sometimes it comes more neatly to men because they are so good at being single focused and so good at preserving energy. I think for women, we have a lot of growth. Um, I know I certainly have around boundaries. Um, and I think the thing I struggle with still is 
being an extrovert and being someone that loves life and loves so many things, I will often say yes to something because in the moment I got excited about it and I wanted to be, I wanted to be wanted in that moment. I wanted to do it. And then when it actually comes to doing it that day or that at that time, it feels more like a no to me. And so then it's like, I can't, I don't want to renege on that commitment. And so there's a lot of, um, I think for me is trying to wait to say yes, to slow down my yes, instead of having a more immediate, like, yes, I want to do that because I am someone that wants to do so many things, but then I spread myself too thin and my, and my energy again is really diffused. Um, and my effectiveness then can be diffused as well. And so I think for me, it's like really thinking through what is, the ask felt good and it might feel like excitement and a yes, but what's the reality of that choice? And is the reality of that choice, it's the same thing of like eating chocolate, right? Like it feels so good in the moment. And then the reality is, you know, the blood sugar spikes and there's different um, feelings of, of maybe not feeling as productive if we've just eaten a, you know, a huge donut. <laughs> so it becomes um, really thinking through for me the reality of, of what the choice actually is going to be in that moment. Again, it comes back to staying present. It, it's always, for me, staying present was always a bit of a struggle um, because I would live in my head or I would be in the future a lot of times. And so it's this continual work of, of grounding and anchoring and knowing my truth and, um, and getting real instead of always being idealistic. And I can definitely feel a lot of similarities with those things you just said. I mean, wanting to say the yes and living two steps ahead. And I think a lot of veterinary professionals do that. We're so programmed to be yes people. And we are also very programmed to be thinking ahead of what we're doing because we always want to be prepared. And that can lead to some really harmful behaviors of not being able to set boundaries. So that was a great um, example and definitely I think something a lot of our community can relate with. Um, so what is your top boundary hack that you could share with our community? Um, yes, and I also to your to your point on that the veterinarians also feel like there's sometimes that saboteur is that people pleaser wanting people to like us i know in the past that was actually my biggest struggle with boundaries was was wanting to please others even before myself wanting to be liked and thinking i needed to give to others before i gave to myself to be liked it was a very big misunderstanding um but these saboteurs are actually what can come in and once we understand our saboteurs it helps us better with boundaries as well so i'm fascinated by the whole conversation around the saboteur and the shadow could you repeat your last question again? <laughs> yes, no, but thank you for that feedback because even, yes, the, the saboteur is a, a huge uh, a huge problem that we have and I'm, I love that you touched on that. Um, so I would love if you have like a top boundary hack that you could share with our community. I love it. What are the, what are the fast tips and tools? So, I find that the body is actually really clear with truth. With and what? so um, it's more of an advanced skill, but I will muscle test, uh, which is kinesiology. But one of the better, easier ways to do it is to be able to just scan the body really quick or to even like put hand on heart and breathe before a yes or a no. And um, if it's, if someone asks you in the moment, it's, let me take a, let me, let me run to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. If you don't have, and you, and you, um, or with the email that comes in, it's like pausing and taking that moment, putting hand on heart, breathing in and out of the heart as though it has a mouth. The horses have us do a lot of heart centered work because that's where they live from. And since horses are more feeling beings because they have hearts five times the size of ours and their guts are huge and they live four legs on the ground, they make choices from what feels good rather than a should or a have to or a mental like, oh, I need someone to like us. They ne they'll never, they are not interested in whether you like them or not. They're interested in, in staying safe and also like their higher self is really interested in service and, and um 
making a contribution, being a beneficial presence here. But they can't be beneficial if they're unhealthy. And that's something we have to remember as well. So that bo quick body scan, your body will give you information. And the more that you get in touch and in tune with it, and the horses really help us do that because we have to be in our bodies with them you'll know is this a yes or a no so it's like you'll your stomach's talking to you oh that doesn't feel good right or your heart will start to close um and there's different ways that this works so so yes the body has a way of talking to us that can provide us with a lot of our own authenticity integrity congruency uh, an awareness if we start to listen to it and we start to grow that relationship with it. So the heart could constrict sometimes when it really doesn't, when it feels like a no, the stomach could start to activate. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll be like, if it's a yes, I'm going to lean in. I'm going to feel a lean in. If it's a no, I'm going to lean backwards and I'll actually give my body that signal. Let me know which, which it is. Um, Sometimes things look like a yes when we thought they'd be a no and vice versa, but it's really, it's coming into just checking in really quick with the body. Um, I remember one of my favorite boundary stories with veterinarians was saying, could you really evaluate whether that is a client you need to accept and take on or if you do, if it would be better for the entire practice if you turn that client away and reminding them that as a business, just like any business, a restaurant or whatnot, you have the right to refuse service to anyone because if that client is going to cause major disturbance and write tons of reviews and bring all these challenges to the practice, is it worth having that one client or could you send them down the street to your competitor or elsewhere because they still will get service, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the one to serve them. And I have to do this as a coach even sometimes of like different opportunities I'm asked to do, uh, different clients, I really need to make sure they're a fit. And so it is, it's the body has its own innate intelligence, the way our mind has intelligence and our intuition is intelligent. And so the quick hack is the body because the intuition can take some time to develop it, but, but a quick hand on heart, does this make me feel, does this feel lighter or heavier? Does this choice feel lighter or heavier? And you can run into the bathroom and do it if you don't want to do it in front of someone. But it's a great thing to start to practice to really get a sense of um, what a choice that you, what you say yes or no to, whether it's going to actually have a positive impact or whether it's something that may actually drain you. And to start to get really, to care about that because we need to be full batteries right now as much as possible um, to serve ourselves and to serve others and to be there for the animals as well. Definitely. Well, and I think to be more like a horse is some of what I'm, <laughs> I hear throughout our conversation because they do, they, they rely so much on how they feel and we tend to stuff that down and not give ourselves credit that we're feeling you know, our body is telling us really what's best for us and it's learning how to listen to that. And the horses, I think, are a key part in learning that when you work with Kate because they they do, they know so much about us um, more than sometimes I feel we have been able to uncover ourselves. They help release a lot of that knowledge about ourselves. So, and as you can see from Kate, behind Kate, she is out on one of the farms that she works on or one of the ranches, I guess I would say. So do you want to tell us a little about where, um, you know, where you currently are working out of and um, other, you know, locations and stuff that you visit? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was so well said, Jamie. You totally get it. <laughs> it is be more like a horse. Um, and essentially, I'm here outside of Boulder, Colorado, uh, at the Mother Ranch in Longmont. And there's a herd of five horses and a mini donkey here and goats that I also work with. And I travel to various ranches. I go back to Los Angeles frequently to different ranches around there. Um, as well as Southern California and Northern California up in like Napa area as well. Um, Texas and New Jersey and more coming in the future as well. But I can travel to different places uh, and partner with different horses. We're doing groundwork, we're not doing riding. 
Um, so it's really, it's safe and it's eye to eye. So it's really this kind of powerful relationship experience where we get to see ourselves and we can see some of our, our shortcomings, but then in real time work on the solutions and how we want to be. A lot of this is ways of being and the horses do some fun stuff around boundaries. They will actually kind of push into your body sometimes uh, to get you to be like, no, or to get you to, to like step into your voice and your power and your leadership to actually ask them, please step back. Please, please step back for me. I need some space. So I have found so many times we're just naturally learning boundary lessons from them because um, they come in and they want us to get stronger and they live off of a culture of both rapport and respect and that respect piece is the boundaries they can trust that we can be strong humans and leaders around them because we know how to set healthy boundaries well thank you so much for sharing your um, experience and just some thoughts about boundaries with our community and really just sharing your gifts i mean you're i'm an amazing blessing to our community with Catalyst. And we are so um, just proud to have you as part of the solution to the problems that we're facing in veterinary medicine. Um, that really has been something that's been going on for quite some time. And I think we're, we're starting to chip away at solutions to really live healthier lives in vet med and have sustainable careers. And um, really just bringing in something that we're so comfortable around which is animals <laughs> and you know having them teach us more and I think that allows us to be a lot more open to those teachings by integrating them into those lessons so thank you so much Kate for your time today and um, have a wonderful afternoon thank you to Jamie thank you everyone for watching